So welcome everyone to this episode of Language Learning Around the World. This is interview number 17. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. I'm really excited about today's guest, Mr. Juan Valenzuela from Peru. <clears throat> he's, got a, he's got quite a long list of accomplishments. So <laughs> um, he's a university professor, a teacher trainer, an academic consultant, a member of the World Parliament of Education, the academic director at Abilities and Education. He has a degree in education and foreign languages, a diploma in successful teaching practices for teaching English, a Cambridge Advanced Certificate of Competence in English, and a master's in pedagogy, in psychopedagogy, and more than 20 years of teaching experience um, all around Peru to students of different ages and levels. So welcome, Juan. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for inviting me. Oh, it's my pleasure. So what can you tell us about? Who is Juan Valenzuela? <laughs> well, I'm a normal man. I'm a normal mortal. Uh, the first thing I, I could say about me is uh, my name, my full name. I'm Juan Jorge Valenzuela Valdez. Oh, wow, I nice. was born. <laughs> I was born in Callao, which is a province that belongs to the the capital of my country, Lima. I'm married. I'm 43. And I have a beautiful family. My wife's name is Eva. Uh, and my son's name is Juan Diego. He's 13. Nice. Uh, right now, I'm in Lima. We are okay. in Lima together. Uh, but we live in northern Peru, in the city of Chiclayo, which is 12 hours from Lima by bus oh. and one hour by plane. Uh, I love music. And I, I use a lot of music in my teaching. Actually, I play the guitar in my classes, and I always <laughs> try to motivate my students by singing songs, by using music as an excuse to experiment with the language, to consolidate grammar, to learn vocabulary, to uh, practice pronunciation, and also to relax, because music can be so relaxing. It can be used for different purposes. Uh, I've been teaching English for quite a long time, uh, so I have more than 20 years of uh, teaching experience, and I love my profession. I am very <laughs> passionate about teaching and being enthusiastic in my classes. Okay, perfect. Yeah, you are very enthusiastic and passionate. I was watching uh, um, a presentation that you were making, and you sing very well. You were playing the guitar and singing, I think, an Elvis song. Um, <laughs> yeah, thank you, yes. So how did you get into teaching? Tell us about that journey. <laughs> well, when I was 14, I was invited to be part of a group of catechists in my church to prepare children for a, their receiving the First Communion. So nice. this was my first teaching experience because every week I was in charge of preparing children for this sacrament. And this included planning lessons, uh, planning content also. And I had to meet a group of people, which was the, the team in charge of the preparation for the year. Um, this was uh, my first teaching experience. It was a good way to discover what was my vocation or what my passion was. Um, so I always say that I started teaching at this age because I felt like a teacher. Uh, <laughs> I had to. I had to set an authority with my kids. Right. I had to. I had to uh, control discipline. You know, working with eight or nine year olds. <laughs> Wow. can be difficult wow. and challenging <laughs> and we had groups of 10 to 12 kids each nice. so it was a good way to develop also my teaching skills mm -hmm. to to also to discover my my vocation and um, this is how i started then when i was 18 or 19 and i finished school i already knew what my vocation was. So when I finished school, it was very clear for me that I had to study education. So I started to study education at this age and I was invited to meet a, 
a, a, a, a teacher's staff in a school, in a primary school near my house. And I was in charge of delivering English lessons for kinder and lower primary. So uh, this is when I confirmed that this was <laughs> my, <laughs> my passion. Um, I continued teaching. Then when I was 24 and I finished my degree, I found uh, another job and I started to work, let's say, officially as a teacher. Okay. Um, and I, by that time, I had already discovered that that enthusiasm, that patience are very important elements right. to make learning happen, to, to understand the students' uh, feelings. Uh, and also uh, using my guitar mm -hmm. was very important in order to uh, make learning happen, to achieve the goals. And then I I have had the, the, the chance the, to work in many different schools here in my country and also to work with different uh, groups of different ages and levels right so i i i i, I feel blessed because i can sit on the floor and <laughs> sing a song and tell a story and use a puppet and, and work with kids uh, but also i am able to deliver a lecture to give a conference for adults uh, actually i am uh, delivering a lot of uh, professional training right. workshops and I'm working with teachers okay. um, I feel confident in saying that most of the things I share are the, the things I've uh, experienced myself throughout right. these years and, and in my workshops for example I never I, I, I never uh, talk too much but I do the things uh, that teachers are supposed to do in the classes for example instead of talking about how to tell a story I tell the teachers the story so that they see the right. the, the way they can do it instead of telling them that uh, teaching grammar is good I do the grammar activity with them the way I would do it with little kids or with teenagers and I think that's very significant Definitely. Uh, um, well, that's something about my <laughs> my teaching experience, uh, and well, I also told you how how I decided to become a an English teacher. So I discovered my vocation at a very young age, and I still feel motivated. I still feel like <laughs> the very first day. That that's good, great. That never changes. Uh -huh. That's great. I mean, you've done it all. So. Um... So we were talking earlier about your own language learning journey. So so tell us about that. How did you master English? Uh, I know you're a very motivated person. Um, mm -hmm. And I think it's important for language teachers to be language learners. Um, I think that's yes. a really vital part of, of our profession. So yeah, your own English learning journey. Yes, you're right. Uh, I always tell uh, my colleagues that if we are language teachers and we teach a language, we are supposed to be good at the language we teach, right? It is sad to hear that not all teachers uh, are good at the language or don't master the language at, at the right level. But in my case, I think that mastering the language I teach is crucial. Right. And everything started when I was little. Uh, my dad was an electrician. So he used to repair electronic devices, but before he gave them back to the owners, to their owners, he tried the devices at home. And so he repaired uh, uh, fridges, TVs, <laughs> and also he repaired uh, one device that in my times was, was called the, the Betamax. Before the DVD, we had the VHS. Right. And before the VHS, we had the Betamax. <laughs> so with the Betamax, you were able to watch a film. Right. And when my dad tried the Betamax uh, before he gave it, he, he gave it back to to the owners, to their owners, he tried it at home. Right. And I remember the first time I watched a film in English was in a Betamax that wasn't mine, but it was uh, one of my dad's clients. 
But, right. <laughs> Uh, and I felt like, wow, when I heard English for the first time in a field, I felt like, wow, I want to learn that language. I want to speak like them. I remember it was a film set in New York. Okay. And also, and also my dream was like, I want to go to New York one day and meet the people that is in the film. <laughs> um, this is uh, how, how English... Uh, made me fall in love with it. Uh, so when I grew up and I was in high school and I had the opportunity to attend English lessons, I took every opportunity to learn the language. I was the only yeah. student, I think, in my yeah. class that was asking the teacher to explain <laughs> again, to repeat, to, to explain grammar, to teach me vocabulary, to correct my pronunciation. And I also, when I was um, two years, I two years before I finished school, I asked my dad to to pay for English classes in an academy, oh. and he accepted. Uh, so I was I was registered in an academy, and I wow. started to to learn the language um, formally. And also, I have some relatives that live in the U.S. Oh. Uh, and they moved there when long time ago when I was little and when they came to Peru for visit I wanted to <laughs> speak to them to practice my English and I wanted them to correct me to 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 correct my pronunciation wow. To, wow. to correct my uh, yeah. my grammar to teach me vocabulary and when I saw a native speaker I always wanted to take the opportunity to speak to them and to 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 practice the language and throughout these years, I am still doing the same. I feel still feel very motivated to continue learning because being a non-native speaker means that that you will always be learning, even in our own languages. In my own languages, there are always new words. Right. There are always some new words I hear, or there are new accents. Here in my country, we have oh, different yeah. regions. And yeah. the way people speak the accents are sometimes so strong and so here in my country if you go to another region sometimes it is difficult to understand someone because of the words they use because huh. of the way they, they conjugate verbs the, the the words they use and the accents so being a language teacher means that you need to continue learning about language in general and especially the language you teach so for me that's quite important and uh, this is affecting my teaching in a very positive way because being motivated and trying to be updated with the demands I think has allowed me to become a better professional and that's how I want to continue doing things I want to continue growing up not only as a language teacher but also as a language learner Right. Because I'm convinced that good teachers never stop learning. And the more we learn, the better for us and the better for our students. Because we have more tools, we are better equipped with the language. This means we can deliver the language more effectively and more accurately. Definitely. I agree. I mean, even as a a native speaker of English, I'm still learning. Like you said, la the languages that we speak, native and foreign, are constantly changing. There's always more to learn. Um, but being a language learner, uh, a foreign language learner, I think helps us as language teachers be empathetic to our students. Um, and besides yes. that, I think um, having qualifications is really important. And you have an extensive list of qualifications. So tell us about your training experience and how um, that helps you grow as a, as a teacher? Well, it is helping me in many ways to become not only a better professional, but also, but also a better human. And nowadays we are working in contact with a lot of people from many different places. And I have had the opportunity to, to travel a lot not also not only inside my, my country but also abroad and i've attended a professional training programs outside outside my country also 
this has allowed me to learn uh, about my career, but also this has allowed me to be in contact with people with different costumes, with different cultures. And this is why I say this has allowed me to be not only a, a better professional, but also a better human, because you can understand why people think one way or why people do things <laughs> another way. Uh, so I'm constantly training. Uh, actually, in my times, uh, I started to be a teacher, a Spanish teacher, because oh, here in my country, in my times, we didn't have that degree of foreign languages. Oh. So I knew, I knew when I was young that I wanted to be a teacher, but the only option I had was to study education. That's the name of that degree, or that was oh, yes. the name of that degree in my country. So when I started uh, teaching, I taught Spanish. I taught social studies in Spanish or Peruvian history. I, mm -hmm. I taught maths. I taught science in <laughs> Spanish. So wow. I was a primary teacher for quite a long time when I started. Uh, and then little by little, I had like more contact with English because I knew English mm -hmm. and I was, in, I was invited to deliver English lessons in some of the schools I I work at. But uh, when I first started, I I used to teach everything in Spanish. Okay. Um, then, and I didn't have any English qualifications. I only had a, a, a degree in education. Mm -hmm. and, and then when I noticed that I had become an English teacher, I knew that I had to to get another qualification, something that uh, validates that I was competent at the language, that I was competent at teaching another language. Because again, uh, I studied education in general, but it is very different to teach a subject than to teach a language. So teaching science is not the same as teaching English or French oh. or Japanese. <laughs> So, and I actually, I always tell my colleagues that we don't teach a subject, we teach a language. So the method is different, the approach is different. So this is when I I noticed I had to, to study more, to update my knowledge of the, the area I was covering. And I decided to prepare myself for getting a, an international qualification of competence in English. Uh, first, I took the, the B2 exam, and then I took the C1. So I did it step by step <laughs> to make sure I, I was doing well. Um, also, I, as I said before, I, I attended lots of uh, programs and workshops on uh, teaching English, uh, both as a second and as a foreign language, outside outside my country and here inside my country too. Uh, one of the courses that had a great impact in my teaching was the TKT course. Okay. Uh, TKT is uh, well, it's actually a series of exams that Cambridge University offers. Right. for language teachers and I when I prepare for 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 Cambridge DKT I fell in love with with teaching a language I discovered right. new things and I felt very motivated when I finished my preparation course I took the three modules of TKT I got a good bang score in the three of them and then I felt like I wanted to share what I learned with other people. And I started to deliver preparation courses for mm -hmm. other teachers like me that wanted to certify that they were uh, ready to teach another language and get an international certificate. So uh, in 2010, more or less, I, I started to deliver preparation courses for teachers Mm -hmm. who plan to get an international certificate of uh, teaching English as a second language. And then I had like more opportunities to 
deliver more courses here in my country. Uh, some uh, publishers contacted me to help them with uh, academic work, with teaching workshops, and I haven't stopped until today. <laughs> and <laughs> during the pandemic, actually, I I continued delivering webinars, uh, and I had the chance to to meet a lot of teachers from all over the world. Uh, this year, only this year, I have delivered more than thirty different. Uh, professional development workshops for teachers wow. covering covering different areas of uh, teaching English, such as how to teach pronunciation, how to teach speaking, how to right. teach listening, or post-pandemic ideas and activities for the return to classes, hybrid teaching and learning, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Perfect. So um, <clears throat> what can you say about the attitude of students in general in Peru regarding English? How important is English? Do they have a strong desire to, to learn English or need for English? Well, English has become quite an important language, I would say, not only here in my country, but all over the world. Mm -hmm. It is a kind of necessity today because we need English to communicate for business, for university. So in the past, English wasn't seen as very important, but I would say that in the last 15 years, schools, especially private in the private sector, uh, have uh, noticed uh, that English is so important. Um, many schools are trying to implement solid and strong programs of English. This means that we are, they are investing more time and more money in English uh, language teaching and learning. And I feel that's good because this is going to enable students to, to reach uh, their goals in the future. This is going to make them reach a better future uh, because as I said before English opens many doors many opportunities so uh, fortunately things have been changing in the last years and I'm uh, so happy about that <laughs> and I hope it continues like that um, I feel like I feel motivated. I feel sometimes I feel like I have a mission and I am also an important piece definitely uh, of the change right because with the work i do not only with teachers but also with the students because i also teach english uh, i i teach kids uh, currently i am teaching children teenagers adults i prepare students for international exams i am preparing a doctor for example uh, this weeks for passing a niles exam he needs to get 7.5 okay. in the <laughs> in the overall score and i feel this is the way i can also contribute to a better future right right for, for humanity because <laughs> it is my mission to do my best because if this this doctor passes his exam this is good for him but also good for other people because Definitely. he will be in contact with other people with patients with um this is a way i can i can do my part this is why I feel I am an important piece and everyone can make a difference. But sometimes it is like, we don't believe it. We don't believe in <laughs> ourselves. We don't believe in the potential we have or, or we feel like lazy or it's easier not to commit, right? But uh, I don't see it that way. I don't see it that way. And I think uh, we can do a lot. And the situation is changing here in my country, and I I I, I want it to continue changing for the better. Oh, that's great. So we've got a few more minutes, time for a couple more questions. So let's talk a little bit about Spanish. So how do English and Spanish compare, um, and how does that affect the particular needs your learners have or the opposite 
foreigners learning Spanish, what challenges uh, might they have? Mm -hmm. Well, I, they, I think they, they are both languages. So that's one similarity. <laughs> uh, and as languages, uh, we have to make sure that uh, we present it the right way. Uh, all these years, throughout uh, these years, I've discovered that even having a same language doesn't mean that we have to teach it the same way to everyone. Because teaching English to children is okay. not the same as teaching English to teenagers or to a right. doctor or to an adult. So the methods are different. The approaches might vary also. So teaching a language doesn't mean that we have a kind of formula to make people learn it. So teaching a language uh, involves being able to present it in a way that it is uh, significant to the receiver or to, 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 the, to the learner. Right. So teaching a language is a kind of magical thing. I always say that <clears throat> teachers are, we are, we are teachers, but we are also clowns. We are psychologists. <laughs> we are musicians. We are actors. We are many things in the classroom. So I would say that for teaching any language, English, Spanish, we need to take the things into account to deliver our teaching uh, appropriately. So I would say that English and Spanish are very similar in many ways. And when you study the grammar, and that's one of the advantages of language teachers, that we study the grammar of the, of the language we are going to teach, you start to learn more things about your own grammar, right. your own language, <laughs> <laughs> right? Because even here, I don't know if this is happening in other countries, but in Peru, many native speakers of English feel that we, the Peruvian teachers, know, know more grammar than them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> when we teach another language, we have to study the language of right. the uh, or the grammar of the language we are teaching. Right. And that's quite an advantage. And having been able to study the grammar of English has made me see that there are many similarities. In the case of nouns, for example, common nouns, proper nouns, generally speaking, there are many similarities, but there are some basic differences that are uh, good to, to know, good to discover. For example, in in English, days of the week, months of the year are considered to be proper nouns. So you need to write them with a capital letter. But in Spanish, it's not right. like that. Right. <laughs> right. Or the position of adjectives, when you have an adjective and a noun. So these are things I have learned when studying English. And it is good because this has allowed me to consolidate my Spanish grammar. Also. Right. <laughs> to learn more about Spanish spelling. Um, that's good. So, But generally speaking, I would say they are very similar. And there there are many, many, many similar words. Right, a lot of co example, cognates. In advanced level, yes. Yeah. Apart from cognates, there are, there are words, that, advanced words, let's say, that are almost the same, such as insipid, insipido, impact, impacto, significant, yeah. significante. S sentiment. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? Right? So that's good. That's great. Um, also, that can be motivating. That can be motivating because when we start to teach a new language to adults, we can teach them these words. We can teach them a lot of vocabulary and make them feel motivated because they will see that there are many, many words that are so similar and they can use when they speak or they write. And I feel that's fantastic. Uh, I feel that's fantastic. And I feel that's something that can help uh, make learning more, uh, let's say more fun, huh. um, also more meaningful. Yeah, that's great. And um, one thing I like to, to talk about related to 
um, comparing languages is uh, borrowed words. I have a list of of borrowed words from English, from mm -hmm. Spanish rather that we use mm -hmm. in English. So I, I found this list earlier. So breeze from brisa, ranch, mm -hmm. gorilla, not the animal, but the warrior, guerrilla, um, mm -hmm. patio, stampede, macho, mm -hmm. cockroach, avocado, plaza, mustang, mm -hmm. cargo, vanilla, lasso, canyon, and tornado. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. So, uh, you said you have a list of these borrow words. Oh yeah, I I, I found a list earlier. Um, Great. <laughs> so languages are always uh, people are always borrowing and sharing and stealing <laughs> words from other languages. So, mm -hmm. so Juan, have you got any final comments or tips before we go? Well, I want to thank you first for inviting me to be part of this interview and share uh, a little bit about me, about what I do with other colleagues, with other teachers from all over the world. And yeah, I just want to say that uh, we need to continue learning. We need to continue with that enthusiasm. Uh, if you want to be a good teacher, you have to be very patient, you have to be very optimistic, you have to be empathetic. Uh, so uh, when teaching, when teaching anything, uh, the attitude counts a lot. Your attitude counts a lot uh, because you can do a lot with a positive attitude. Many times what the students want is a shoulder. I'm going to listen to them, so I'm going to understand them. Um, this can affect learning positively when you are optimistic, when they feel that you are there. So this would be my piece of advice for the colleagues that are watching this interview right now to continue giving our best. And if you feel uh, I can help you in any way, you can contact me. Well, you can find me in YouTube. Uh, uh, also, you can find me in my website in abilities and education the abilities okay. and education website so that we can share pedagogical experiences together life experiences together i am still uh, delivering webinars okay so i am i am very active you can find Definitely. me somewhere yeah. okay well thank you juan for coming um it's been great hearing about your um expertise and experiences and insights um i'll put uh, the links for people to contact you and find out more about you below. Uh, thank you, everyone, for watching. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Good luck. I'm Jeff Buck, and I'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.